Hey guys, um, this is part, this is part two of yesterday's sermon. Yesterday's sermon was called Toolbox, um, and I talked about the tools can be used for good or for bad, or, and to use tools for, tools for good and not, and not bad, and it occurred to me last night that it's not it is not only about using tools for good or not and not bad and that that things are tools like social media or you know any tools that you have uh, your ability to speak is a tool your kindness can be a tool used for good um, anything can be a tool is how you use it but the Lord br brought something very interesting to me he said you could change the avenue but if you don't change the attitude the issue won't be dealt with and it'll keep showing up so you could do, you could delete a certain social media app off your phone, but if you don't deal with that attitude of insecurity or whatever, you could delete all the social media apps off your phone you want. You can unfriend anyone you want. Uh, you can unfollow anyone you want, but if unless you deal with the attitude of of why you you pay attention so so much to what other people think or why when you see other people's posts do you react that way um the issue will just keep showing up for example if you Let's say if you were 13 and by accident you got introduced to porn because there was a pop-up and you looked and you got turned on and whatever. So as you, um, at 13, uh, you started sneaking porn, 14, you you continued 15 you continued and then it got progressively worse until it became an addiction and you and you're you're a guy so and at like let's say 25 you met this girl who you were just you thought okay if i got married and i'm able to have sex this will go away and then you got married thinking that it will go away and it didn't um it got progressively worse because you expected your wife to be like those uh women that you see and she wasn't she's just an ordinary girl and she can't um, deal uh, with your um, appetite so um, so because of that it, it went from seeing it went from uh, accidentally seeing it on on the internet and when you get old when you got older you got a credit card so you're now able to pay to see it and um so you got married thinking that would go away but it didn't it just um you just had to hide it more from from your wife and um then you you got introduced to strip clubs so you started it started from the internet what went on from there progressive progressively worse 
and then you start going to strip clubs. See, the avenue didn't the 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 avenue might have changed, but the addiction didn't change. And this goes for anything. Like, you could delete all the Facebook apps or Twitter apps or anything off your phone, but unless the attitude changes, um, your life isn't going to get any better. And the Lord is calling um, compassionately for an attitude change. He wants so much more for you than to be, than to be um, riddled with low self-esteem and riddled with comparison. And uh, he he wants so much more for you, and it's and it's deeper than getting rid of social media. Um, it, it requires um, a mind change. Um, that um, the Lord brought this scripture to me last night. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what I'm praying now for my own life in every area is I want the mind of Christ. I want what he thinks about issues to be what I think about issues. I want the way he walks to be the way I walk. And that's, that's what um, happens. Because you could delete Facebook off your phone. But insecurity in looking at all those posts will stay. It'll just manifest in another way. So you can delete all of the rude comments and how you um, and rude jokes off your phone, but those rude comments and rude jokes will manifest in another way if it not be uh, comments from people at the subway station or whatever because if you don't deal with the issue and the attitude behind it the the issue will keep showing up but in another way it's like it's like you um it's like one of those boxes with the big with you open the big box and then there's a little box and then there's a smaller box, smaller box, smaller box. So you'll, you'll get rid of one box, but you'll keep opening up um, other boxes and the issue, although you throw one thing away, it won't um, solve unless you go down to the court and, and figure out what is driving this. Ooh. Like, the issue is not so much for me that you're scrolling and taking these um, mean comments or, or rude comments to heart and you're losing sleep over it. The issue for me is why are you doing that? When you go down deep and you can find out the why to things and work, you kind of, um, for me, I had to do this with a lot of issues in my life, with some issues with family members and all of that. I had to do this with the, with all that issue. I had to go back to where it started and I had to re remember where it started so I could then deal with, with those pains. And I felt all that shame, I felt all the pain, 
And I had to know that even though I was a, a little child when the issue uh, took place, um, that I'm a grown woman now and I can deal with it, you know? I'm 36 now, I'm no longer a child. And, and I had to know that there was help and hope. So I'm not telling you to do something that I didn't do myself um, with issues in my life. So, so instead of like deleting social media and thinking that it will solve it, because I don't see it anymore, there is a deeper issue inside of you that is causing you to react, react this way. So for real healing, you need to go down deep, whether it be uh, with a pastor, with a therapist. I'm a big proponent in therapy, by the way. Um, with, with anyone, even just soul searching, you need to, you need to go down deep and figure out what is the underlying, um, what is the underlying issue um, that I'm dealing with and why do those social media posts affect me that much? And when you deal with the deeper issues and when someone uh, says something mean to you on social media, it won't, it'll, it'll sting a bit much. It'll, it'll sting a bit, but it won't, um, paralyze you. It won't, it won't cause you to be up all night with sweats and, oh my God, that person doesn't like me. Oh my God, they said this. Um, it's not about social media. It's about how you react to it or how you react to that person. So it's not about them or their posts. It's something in you that's causing you to react to this. So what I had to do was go back and say, why am I, why am I offended or upset about this post or about this issue? Um, what is the deeper underlying um, issue in me that causes me to um, be upset and flip and flare up? Because sometimes issues are issues are a mirror to what's really going on. So it's not about him not take your husband not taking care of the kids. It's about you feeling underappreciated like a maid. So that's why you blow up at your kids and that's why you just have an explosive temper. It's not about them or what they did. It's, it's about you and your deeper need uh, to be appreciated. Um, and when, yesterday I talked about um, social media being a tool that can be used for good and bad. And I found what works for me is to open up whatever website it is and not to scroll on it or not to do anything with it, but to talk to it in regards to you. So, um, to, to open it up and say, you know what? I'm not going to let you control me. I'm going to control you. Because sometimes we let in, in 
inanimate objects control us. We let social media control us. We let what people think control us. And we have to begin to talk to ourselves. I've done this. I've done it. I've done it with um, my fear. I've done it with several things. I've looked at it and st said, I'm not going to let you control me. And it's and it's not like I don't have down days or am filled with, you know, you know, confidence all the time. But every time, every time those things come up, come up, something rises up in me that says, I've dealt with you before and I won't let you kick my butt again. Go back to hell where you came. Or something like that, I say to myself. Because sometimes we as humans go through cycles and it's the same issue but different avenue and we, and we get rid of the avenue without dealing with the issue. But we need to deal with the issue because the issue will will be there forever and it will grow and grow and grow and grow no matter how many avenues we we try and get rid of no matter how many apps we delete on the phone the issue um is with not with the attitude not with the avenue but with the attitude and the, and the issue of the thing. I should say the problem is with the issue, not the app, not the avenue. Because avenues can change if you don't, if you delete the porn app off your phone, you can still, um, well, not now in Toronto, but regularly, you can still uh, go to a strip club and watch um, the um, exotic dancers there. And it's the, it's the same issue, but different avenue. But if you deal with the issue, you won't have the desire to do that. And sometimes that takes therapy. Sometimes that takes just talking to other men that deal with the issue or if you deal with gossip um the um you you may delete your facebook app to get rid of all the facebook gossip but you may find gossip at church or with your co-workers or whatever because if you don't deal with the issue, an avenue to foster that issue will appear. So deal with the issue so that when the avenue does appear, it won't have a hold over you. You may be tempted for a bit, but you'll be able, he will provide a way of escape for you if you deal with the issue and not just the avenue. Because avenues can change, but the thing is, you have to deal with the issue. Dealing with the issue, um, you can get real freedom from that. Dealing with the avenue, the surface stuff, um, and the issue still there, you won't get freedom. You'll just find another way to do it. Um, like if you have an issue with telling the truth, um, if you're not lying to your parents, uh, you may lie to your boss or you may get involved in, in schemes. Same issue. Um, different avenue. 
you need to deal with the issue and you need to consult God about how to deal with um, the issue that you're facing whatever issue it is and he's God enough to help you deal with it and he's God enough to forgive you and it's not over nothing is over every day creates a chance for chains chains change and and chains too but do you want the change do you want no do you want the chains or do you want the chains or do you want the chains or do you want the chain the change sorry um tongue twister there so the choice is yours you can make a decision every day I want to I want the chains or I want to change the decision is yours and I know it's difficult but it is possible and there's more for you out there than than what you're living right now let me pray for you father I thank you for the word you put in me today Lord God I pray Lord God that your we will use tools for good and not for evil and I declare that avenues are not our problem Lord God I pray that we will deal with the issues so that when different avenues come with the same issues it won't affect us God I pray that you're sending help to those who are in desperate need of it Lord God I pray that you're sending therapists and people to help them, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that your peace and understanding and your illumination will be with them today. In the name of Jesus, amen. There is freedom available. There is freedom available for you no matter who you are. And it's not too late. You could have been dealing with an issue for years and and dealing with it through different avenues but there is freedom the Lord comes to break chains and bring change to your life and he died to bring change to your life he died not only for your sins but he died so that you don't have to live in bondage so that you can live in the freedom he said he says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that freedom is available to anyone who asks for it. If you got pain, I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you next time. If you got pain, he's the pain taker. If you feel lost, He's the way maker. If you need freedom, a saver, he's a prison shaken savior. If you got chains, he's the chain breaker. If you got pain, he's the pain taker. If you feel lost, He's the way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's the prison chicken savior. If you got chains, he's the chain breaker. That was chain that was chain breaker by by I'll give you the artist that was a song called chain breaker I forget who it's by um I'll see you next time <laughs>